Well, welcome everyone to the Ford School of uh, Public Policy, the International Policy Center, and uh, here at the Ford School is uh, very pleased to host this event together with uh, the Center for Middle East uh, and North African Studies and the International Institute. Um, and I'm going to uh, very briefly introduce the director of the Center for Middle East uh, and North African Studies, uh, who will uh, be setting the stage for uh, the, the speech to the, the talk we're going to, to be listening to. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce right now Gottfried Hagen, who is um, a very uh, uh, distinguished scholar of Ottoman studies, uh, Ottoman Empire studies, and he is also a very accomplished linguist, and as I said, he has been directing the Center for uh, Middle East and uh, North African Studies here at University of Michigan for uh, several years now, and um, Gottfried, if you would like to introduce our speaker, that would be great. Thank you very much. Um, it is a great honor for me to um, welcome everybody and to welcome our uh, guests on behalf of the um, Islamic <coughs> Studies program at the University of Michigan, which is administratively housed by the Center for Middle Eastern and North African Studies, but is um, actually a separate unit. So let me quickly say a few words about this relatively recent program. <clears throat> um, at U of M, the study of the Middle East begins already in the 19th century, um, but it was actually only after World War II when we had a Near Eastern Studies Department that united historians, political scientists, linguists, geographers, a truly interdisciplinary um, unit. <clears throat> Um, but then by the end of the 1960s, um, U of M's Middle East specialists were actually scattered over a number of depart different uh, disciplinary departments and um, professional schools, such as what is now the Ford School. Um, <clears throat> so in the early 60s, um, seated by the Ford Foundation, um, and then continued by the Department of Education's uh, Title VI program, um, U of M received an area studies center as a national resource center, as a hub between all these different units. Um, and as a result, um, U of M now prides itself of uh, a total of about um, 67 Middle East faculty members covering everything from ancient uh, Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, Egypt through the Roman era into um, the contemporary period. <clears throat> it was on the basis of these strengths that U of M was invited in the early 2000s to submit a proposal um, for a center for global and regional Islamic studies. Um, it was not successful with the initially uh, intended sponsor, but the proposal was strong enough and was shepherded by a group led by uh, Mark Tesler um, to receive funding from the International Institute and from the provost to create an interdepartmental program uh, dedicated to the study, interdisciplinary study of Islamic thought and practice in regional and global social contexts. Um, and it is this um, combination of the regional and the global, which makes the distinction of this, uh, this program. Um, today, uh, the Islamic Studies program covers every region on the globe with faculty experts working on Africa, Middle East, Europe, South, Southeast, and Central Asia, and also a strong um, representation of um, the is uh, Islam in the United States. The Islamic Studies program seeks to make a crucial contribution um, to the undergraduate and graduate curriculum at U of M, <clears throat> has underwritten a number of exciting research proposals and teaching initiatives, has funded two important and intriguing conferences, one of Islamophobia and Islamophilia, and another one on dreams and visions, and both of them will, um, the proceedings of both of them will appear in print soon. <clears throat> Um, 
So <clears throat> it is our plan to make the study of Islam all over the globe, the focus of a vibrant community of teaching and research at U of M. And so we're proud and honored today to welcome a representative of a truly global Islamic institution, the Islamic Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, which is a subsidiary of the Organization of the Islamic Conference <coughs> as one of the most important international associations of Islamic countries. So it's my honor to introduce to you the Director General of the organization, with the acronym ISESCO, Dr. Abdelaziz Othman Atwaiji. Dr. Atwaiji was born and raised in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, where he obtained his first degree. He, before he went actually on to study in the US, <coughs> and we were just talking about how many of his country are pursuing the same um, path. <coughs> He obtained um, an MA and a doctorate in curriculum from the University of Oregon, then returned to his home country to start an academic career um, at King Saud University. And after a few years, um, joined the recently founded Islamic Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization as its Deputy Director General for Culture. And in 1991, he was elected its Director General, and he has been uh, just re-elected last year for another um, double term of three years each. Um, Dr. Altwaji is also the Secretary General of the Federation of the Universities of the Islamic World, which is one of the ISESCO subsidiaries. He has published widely a total of seven books and a large number of articles on Islam, on globalization, on coexistence and dialogue. Um, and he's a member of boards of numerous regional and global educational institutions. Um, and today he will speak to us about the organization he has directed for such a long time, the role of Islamic international organizations in the realm of international politics. Please join me in welcoming Dr. al -Twaiji. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to stand in front of you in this auspicious university to speak to you about one of the most uh, compelling and uh, intriguing issues uh, in our world today. When we speak about Islam and Muslims, the first thing that comes to the mind of the listener in the West is Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. And uh, I know that uh, this, because this uh, uh, is the case. Is, is this is the case because of the tragic and criminal acts that were carried here in this country in 9/11, in a very inhuman and acceptable uh, criminal act, which all Muslims denounced and rejected. But there are many good things in the Islamic world, and the Muslim people all over the world are decent individuals, peace-loving, like any other people in the globe. Uh, many of them are well-educated. And in their countries, there are development. There are a lot of projects in different fields, either economical, social, educational, cultural, and in the art, arts fields, and in, in many walks of their lives. Uh, Unfortunately, little of that comes to the West, especially to the United States. Although there is a big uh, community, Muslim community in the United States, but the media doesn't uh, show uh, much of, of the activity of Muslims within the United States or outside the United States. Uh, therefore, uh, today I have the pleasure and the honor to speak to you 
about the role of the Islamic international organizations and especially the organization which I uh, work in as director general, that's CISCO. Uh, I would like to uh, first of all thank uh, Professor Gottfried uh, Hagman for, Hagen for, for, for inviting me, for uh, preparing for this uh, lecture and for the authorities in this beautiful university and for all of you for coming and listening to what I will say. And I will uh, certainly be delighted when I hear some of the questions so we can clarify many uh, issues that need to be clarified. As you uh, may know, that there is a confusion now in the minds of many people about the word Islam and Islamic and Islamist. Many people don't understand the connotation and the meanings of uh, these uh, words. Uh, but those who have studied Islam and working in the field of uh, research in the Islamic uh, literature, in the Islamic history, in the Islamic civilization. Islamic is usually uh, an adjective that is given to uh, a country or an action or a work that uh, represents the, the religion of Islam and the, the, the civilization of Islam. And this is a, a, a term used by academics, by, by scholars, by researchers, and by Muslims themselves. But Islamist is misused because in the origin, Islamist means a person who is specializing in Islamic studies, like Orientalist, studying the, 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 science, the sciences and the literature and the history of, of the Oriental uh, countries. But now Islamist has become an acronym of violence, of uh, extremism, of close-mindedness. Like uh, the, uh, the same uh, uh, word when it is translated into, into Arabic, when they speak about fundamentalist, and they say al-usuliyun. Uh, the word usuli in Arabic is a noble adjective, a noble name given to a person who studies the usul, the origins of sharia, the origins of fiqh. But now a fundamentalist usuli means a person who is uh, uh, integrist, integrist uh, uh, extremist in his positions and, and thought. And the whole meaning has been shifted away from the reality of the, of the word itself. Now we have to correct this. I mean, we cannot keep up uh, with, the, with, the, with the confusion and, and, and the mis, mis, misusage of, of, of terms. And this needs a lot of work by uh, academics, by uh, educationists and uh, uh, researchers, and especially from the Islamic world and those in the West who are working in the institutes and the centers for Islamic studies and Islamic culture and Islamic civilization. Uh, we cannot forget and uh, avoid saying that there are movements in the Islamic world which uh, raise the banner of uh, violence, like uh, Al-Qaeda. But w we cannot uh, blame Islam for this kind of thinking or this kind of behavior because this is a bad interpretation, a wrong understanding of certain texts in Islam. And after all, Al-Qaeda as a criminal group of people, was not the product of Islam or an Islamic country. It was a, a group that grew in a very complicated, intermingled situation in Afghanistan when the West was fighting the Soviet Union. And these people were used as jihadists with the emirs of jihad from Afghanistan, and they, ha and they found the platform and the, and the uh, environment where they developed their capacities and started manipulating many young people and then they turned on uh, their countries of origin and the West uh, as well. Uh, any sane Muslim with, with a simple understanding of the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet will know that what they do is against Islam because killing innocent people is not Islamic. Attacking innocent people is not Islamic. Destroying buildings and offices and civilian uh, uh, properties is an Islamic. Propagating lies and uh, falsification and disseminating them is not Islamic because these are all crimes in Islam. 
punishable. Anybody who co commits such uh, acts is, is punished uh, according to the Islamic laws. And we have to see, to, to see that uh, uh, these people uh, cannot and, and should not continue to hijack Islam and, uh, and, and the banner of Islam to deceive many people in the world and among those people, some Muslims, some young youngsters, some Muslims who are taken to camps to be trained to uh, commit violence. The organizations now in, Isla in the Islamic country, uh, countries, in the Islamic world, and in the forefront is Cisco, is playing a great role in re-educating and in, in, in bringing up the realities of Islam, the, the true uh, images of Islam, the true teachings of Islam, the true face of Islam. And this is, of course, a, a religious and a moral duty that we, ha we have to do. Because if we leave the, the, the field for these people, then everybody will take for granted what they say as Islam. And that will create a real clash of civilizations, a real clash of cultures, a real clash of nations. And that's very catastrophic for the uh, security and, and, and well-being of the human race and for the security and well-being of all the countries. Uh, the, division, the, the division or the difference between Islamic countries and Islamic world, uh, the Islamic world is, is, is just an idea. It, it doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. We say the Islamic world, but which world? Where is it? Is it the OIC member states? Or is it the Arab countries and some African Asian countries around them? Or is it the whole globe? Because there are Muslims everywhere. Muslims in America, Muslims in Latin America, Muslims in Europe, Muslims in Af Africa, in Southeast Asia. And there are millions of Muslims in Russia, in China. So the, 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 the word itself has to be redefined and we have to have parameters for it to, to clarify what it means. Islamic countries, do, really, we have, do, do we really have Islamic countries? I mean, many of the existing countries now do not call themselves Islamic states or Islamic countries. For example, Turkey, which is one of the biggest countries in the, in the world, uh, says it is a, 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 a circular country. It doesn't call itself an Islamic state. Senegal, for example, in the, in, in the west of Africa, doesn't call itself an Islamic state because they are a secular, they, they adopt secular uh, procedures and, 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 and systems. Uh, I think only one or two states in the, in the, in the, in the Islamic world, or so-called Islamic world, may claim that they are Islamic states. But ma the majority of the states do not really accept to call themselves Islamic states because some of them also have non-Muslims living in them, like, you know, uh, Egypt. There are ma many, many uh, Christian Copts, like Lebanon. There are Christians of different de denominations, and there are Shias and Mus uh, Sunnis, and there are Druze. Uh, Syria, uh, where you have uh, Christians and you have Jews as well, Iraq uh, uh, in the past and now, and, and so on and so forth. Malaysia, which is the biggest, uh, one of the biggest countries in Asia, uh, they do not call themselves, and Indonesia, they do not call themselves Islamic State. So these uh, definitions have to be uh, set and, and, and clarified. Uh, Islamic organizations and Islamic movements, there is also a confusion now. When, when, when someone here, Islamic organization, the first thing that comes to his mind is a, 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 an organization or a movement that is calling for jihad. And they don't know that, you know, there are a big difference between the movement that, that calls for violence or for jihad or for whatever they may, they, may, they, may, they, may, they may prefer to call it, and the Islamic organizations that are working in the fields of development, in the fields of economics, uh, culture, education, uh, science and technology, uh, research, and, and so on and so forth. So we have also to clarify this to the audiences everywhere that when you hear a word like this or a name like that, you have to be careful not to react uh, negatively to it and to uh, behave accordingly. And uh, uh, last night in the airport of Detroit, I faced a <laughs> very, very uh, funny um, you know, uh, um, experience. I, I came to, to here with a visa from the uh, American embassy in Rabat, and it was given to me by the f uh, American ambassador in his home. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 
I traveled from Rabat to, to Paris safely and from Paris to Detroit safely. And when I entered the, the airport of Detroit and came in front of the immigration officer, she was a lady, she started asking me new questions. I said, I think you have all these uh, questions uh, answered in the forms that I filled in, in Morocco. And my, my, my visa is, is, is new and, and authentic. There is no falsification here. And my passport is diplomatic. And I'm the guest of the University of Michigan. And afterwards, I'll be in uh, Washington, DC for another uh, activity in Georgetown University and with the State Department and the Department of Education. And I, I have a list of the highly ranking, higher, higher ranking officials who will meet me on the 18th and 19th of this month. But she started playing with her computer, asking me questions and putting my fingers on certain things, you know, maybe these fingerprints. And, and then she put my eye in front of a camera. And, and I was just saying, oh my God, is this the beginning? I'm here to uh, bring, uh, to build bridges and to create uh, uh, trust and confidence and clarify misconceptions. Now this is another bridge being built in front of me. And I thought it was the end, but then she asked me to go to another office. And she took me to the office, and there were many officers, you know, they were security people with their you know, uniforms. And she asked me to sit down, and I sat down, and then a lady called my name, and I said, yes. She said, why you are coming to Michigan? I said, I'm coming here as a, a guest of the University of Michigan, and a guest also of the State Department. And I'm coming to deliver some speeches. And this is the first of, it, of my, my series. I said, what are you going to talk about? I, I'm, I'm saying this story to, sh to show you how people are not aware of, of, of what, what they hear and what they read. I said, I'm going to talk about the in Islamic international organizations and their the role in the realm of, of politics. She said, uh, what, or, what company do you work in? I said, I'm not working in any company. I am the director general of ISESCO. This is the Islamic Education Center and Cultural Organization. And my uh, you know, full description is in my passport, which you have it, and also in the papers that I have filled in Rabat. And you can see it in the computer in front of you. I think you have all the information. She said, uh, how much money do you have? I said, I have <laughs> this amount. She said, why you bring this big amount of money? Why don't you use your credit cards? I said, I don't like to be debted to anybody. I like to spend, you know, cash. And many silly questions. And I, I was very cool, very cool, you know, like if I was taking a tranquilizer. And then she said, OK, where is the letter of invitation from the University of Michigan? Where is the list of the, the personalities whom you will meet in Washington, DC? I ran after Dr. Said to, to give me these documents because he had them in his in his case. Then she took uh, photographs for them, copies. And then she said to me, go there to that lady there. She's another officer. And I went to that lady and said, um, what is going on? I have to go now. The people are waiting for us. She said, no, no, you have uh, some money. We want to verify that what you said is right. Show us your money and don't show it now. Come with me. And she took me to her room. And there is another gentleman joined us. And they sat there and she said, give us the money. I give them my money. And they started counting them. Until they finished. I think it was some dollar, some hundred, three or four hundred dollars more than what I said. I said, you know that you have uh, declared something that's not correct? I said, what is the incorrect uh, declaration? She said, no. I said, well, I cannot count my money every time. You know, I mean, this is not important. You want to take them, take them. <laughs> So this is the misconception about Islamic organizations. I found it in the, in the airport in Detroit. And I thought I won't, I won't uh, face such a, uh, a funny situation, but I did, I did face it. So I was very, very cool. And I said, OK, if you want to take these uh, uh, extra monies, it's, it's yours. Or if you want to take the whole money, take it. I don't care. Let me go because I have people waiting for me. And, and then the, she said, no, no, we have to search your bag. Oh my God. So I gave her my bag and she started searching them. She said, do you have anything in your pockets? I try to find. I said, I find, I, how can I find anything that is not there? Everything I have, I gave to you. And they didn't let me go until I was completely fed up. 
And then I said, OK, they said, you, you may go now. I said, thank you very much. This is a wonderful reception. <laughs> so I went and I found my colleagues waiting for me. And the funniest thing is not this. This is fine. I, I can cope with it, you know. I looked at their passports. We, we received the same visa the same day from the same embassy. And we were at the ambassador's house, the three of us. And I said, what did they do with your passports? So I took their passports. I, they, they gave me until the 25th of this month just to stay in the United States. After the 25th, I will be arrested. So I looked at uh, Dr. Said's uh, passport, and he was given till 13th of April. And I looked at Dr. Mustafa, and he's, he's for the first time in America. And he was given until June. <laughs> ah, I said, the boss is giving until the 25th of March. And the assistants are given, you know, longer periods. <laughs> they are lucky. <laughs> but this, this is the reality. We have, we have to work hard to change this mentality, this uh, way of behaving. Because, uh, you know, yes, the, the security measures have to be taken everywhere because we are concerned about the safety of people. We are concerned about the well-being of any state in the world. We are, we are respectable of laws and, 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 and law and order. But we have to be very... Uh, selective in, 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 in the cases because you, my appearance and the documents I had doesn't indicate in any way that I am a suspect or that I might do something wrong here in this country. Uh, so the, the, this is the difference between Islamic organizations and Islamic movements, <laughs> which we have to tell the, to the security people in all airports, not only in America. And intergovernmental and non-governmental. The intergovernmental is... Uh, a group of uh, uh, states creating a, a, an organization or a, an institution for joint work, like ESESCO, because we, we have uh, 57 member states in the OIC system who created these institutions and org organizations. So this is intergovernmental, and it has the, 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 the nature of uh, an international organization that has um, uh, 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 immunities and privileges and uh, uh, you know, political uh, uh, immunities and, and, and privileges also. And the non-governmental organization, all, all of you know them, you know these are civil institutions that are uh, formed or created by a certain uh, law within each state or uh, uh, each country. So even this is, 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 is confusing to many people. Uh, and uh, I think uh, I am not, I hope I'm not fumbling this. Okay. Now, uh, the, 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 the organizations and their role, uh, whether they are intergovernmental or non-governmental, in the Islamic world, I will, I will be very precise and, and I will concentrate on this, on this side, have to uh, participate in, first of all, uh, developing their countries, their respective countries, their respective communities, uh, play a role in the politics because some of these organizations are political, like the OIC, like the Arab League, like the African Union. Uh, like the Maghreb Union, these uh, institutions, the, the intergovernmental institutions, have a political uh, uh, fields, have political fields, and others have developmental fields, like the Islamic Develop Development Bank, the ISESCO, and some other institutions and organizations in, 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 in the Islamic world. Uh, some of uh, the, uh, the, the, the institutions, w even those who are uh, created in, 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 in the form of non-governmental institutions, some of them are re religiously oriented, like Jamiat uh, al-Dawah in Libya, which, which has great uh, uh, you know, uh, activities in, in, in Africa and Asia and in some other places in teaching Arabic and giving scholarships and sending teachers and things like that. And, and like the Rabid al-Alam al-Islami, the Islamic uh, League in, in Mecca, and uh, the Kuwaiti... Uh, international charitable organization and Sheikh Zayed uh, charitable organization in, in, in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates and many other, other, other you know, organizations and institutions. And some of them are uh, uh, humanitarian and charitable, not only religious. You know. Some concentrate on forming uh, imams, teachers of, of Islamic studies, uh, building mosques, helping you know, um, communities in the religious context, and some are doing more than that. You know, they build hospitals, they dig wells, and give you know, uh, 
uh, assistance uh, and, and sometimes build institutions for the elderly and uh, for the uh, orphans. And, uh, some of them are, are, are funded by the governments and some are funded by, by the individuals and the companies and the uh, you know, uh, uh, rich people. But after 9-11, there was a, a misconception in the West and in the United States in particular about these organizations, this big, you know, uh, spectrum of, 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 of uh, institutions, organizations, whether governmental or non-governmental, and they started uh, prevent, preventing aid and uh, charity from going, and there were some restrictions on money transfer, even through banks. And many people suffered in Africa and in Asia. You know, people who used to receive uh, funds for, for the, the orphans, funds for the elderly, some who used to receive uh, donations for the stu students to, to continue their studies or to help the farmers in their you know, farms. The, the, the money didn't uh, uh, reach them. It stopped because of, of uh, security measures. And uh, even the, the people who used to go to teach found some difficulties. And this is you know, understood to a certain extent because the, the world at that, at that moment was, you know, blown up. I mean, it was uh, like uh, an atomic bomb. So we have to come now and uh, re-evaluate the whole thing. Organization can be functioning and what should be stopped? And we cannot uh, put obstacles in front of all or, you know, diminish the role of all. And this needs a lot of uh, research and a lot of uh, wise uh, uh, selection. Uh, Isesco as a specialized institution of the OIC, as you may know, was, was created in 1982. And uh, this, the, 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 the framework of SESCO is the OIC. OIC started in 1969 after the uh, burning of the uh, Al Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. Uh, the Muslim uh, countries uh, called for uh, a summit in Rabat in Morocco. And the two leaders who were in the forefront for the, the, the joining of this, of this conference was the late King Faisal of Saudi Arabia and the late King Hassan II of Morocco. And the conference was held in Rabat and it was the, 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 uh, the place where the idea de developed and in 1972 the foreign ministers met in Jeddah and an, a, a, a decision was taken to create the organization of the Islamic conference that will be based in Jeddah temporarily and the, the headquarter will be in Jerusalem. And uh, since then it started working and ISESCO was created in 1982 because the Muslim countries, all the OIC member states, found it important to create an educational, scientific and cultural organization like UNESCO to serve the Muslim countries in developing these fields of uh, competence. And uh, since then ISESCO was created and it uh, it, it started working with, with the member states to develop uh, the, the uh, fields of education, science and culture and, de and designed and made many strategies in these fields uh, uh, like the uh, culture, cultural strategy and the educational strategy and uh, the uh, uh, this is our, our headquarters in Rabat. I will go back to some points uh, that I missed now but I will go to them. Uh, the uh, this is some uh, information about the Cisco objectives and uh, uh, the uh, General Conference, the Executive Council and the General Secretary, like UNESCO, and this is the Member States. Uh, this is the Ministerial Conferences, I will come to it, but the strategy. We developed these strategies because we believe in Cisco that the work has to be based on strategies, on well, 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 well thought uh, plans uh, made uh, or designed on uh, factual information, factual data about the, the, the Islamic countries, what they need in the field of Cisco's competence, that need, that's education, science and culture and communication. And we, we developed these strategies, strategy for the promotion of education and cultural strategy, strategy for science, technology and innovation, strategy for development of biotechnology in the Islamic world, strategy for water resources management, and strategy for bringing Muslim madahib closer together strategy for Islamic cultural action outside the Islamic world, strategy for benefiting from Muslim competencies uh, outside the Islamic world, strategy for developing university education, and strategy of the CAFL, 
that's, uh, solidarity uh, to serve Muslim developmental and civilizational causes. And from these strategies, we uh, design and uh, make our plans of action, the three years plan of actions that uh, are implemented uh, in, in our member states and outside mem the member states where Muslims exist. Uh, the uh, objectives of SESCO uh, are many, but I will just uh, mention uh, three of them, to strengthen, uh, promote and consolidate cooperation among the member states and consolidate it in the fields of education, science, culture, and communication, as well as to develop and upgrade these fields within the framework of the civilization reference of the Islamic world and in the light of the human Islamic values and ideals. To consolidate understanding among peoples inside and outside the member states and contribute to the achievement of world peace and security through various means, particularly through education, science, culture, and communication. To publicize the correct image of Islam and Islamic culture, promote dialogue among civilizations, cultures, and religions, and work towards spreading the values of justice and peace along with the principles of freedom and human rights in accordance with the Islamic civilization pers perspectives. These are lofty and noble uh, objectives, and uh, because ISESCO is sincere in its work, it gained the support and the partnership, uh, partnership of many international organizations. Now we have more than 175 uh, uh, protocols and cooperation agreements signed with various international and regional organizations all over the world. Uh, the UN system, the Francophonic uh, Organization, the Council of Europe, and many uh, other uh, institutions. And uh, we work uh, closely with them uh, in implementing uh, hundreds of activities in our fields of competence, which benefit many people uh, either in Africa, Asia, uh, or in the Arab countries. And also uh, where Muslims exist, so, uh, whether in Europe, uh, North America, Latin America, and Southeast Asia and Africa. Uh, also, ISESCO, in its uh, mission as a developmental and civilizational institution, uh, started uh, a, a convening uh, ministerial conferences in, 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 in fields other than education, science, and culture. For example, uh, we started working also in higher education and scientific research. And in, 19, in, uh, 19, uh, uh, in, in, in the year 2000, we, we, we organized the first Islamic conference for the ministers of higher education and scientific research in Riyadh. And then we held the second one in Tripoli in Libya, and the third in Kuwait, and the third in uh, Azerbaijan, and the fourth will, uh, and, and the, and the, and the fifth will be, will be, uh, will be organized in uh, Kuala Lumpur in October this year. Also, we created the Conference of the Ministers of Culture. We held uh, five, five sessions. And the Conference of Environment Ministers, we held three sessions. And the Conference of Ministers in Charge of Childhood, and we held three sessions. And the next session will be next year in, in, in Libya. And the Ministers of Environment will have also their fourth session next October in Tunisia. So we entered into, in, in, into, into new developmental areas. Environment is very important for, for development. Uh, research is very important. Childhood, they are the future. And also, we didn't forget the role of women. We have not started a conference for uh, ministers who are in charge of women's uh, activities or affairs in our countries because there is a competition between us and the OIC itself. The OIC called for a, a meeting for the first ladies uh, of the uh, OIC member states, and it was uh, organized in Cairo, I think, uh, last year. And I think they, 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 th they are now preparing to, to create a, a kind of a, an organization for women and women, 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 women affairs uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the OIC system. But I don't think it will be created because Iran wants to host it, Saudi Arabia opposes this, and Egypt wants to host it, and now we are in a struggle of uh, elephants. Each one is... <laughs> is pushing and, and pulling the... Uh, yes, ma'am. It's, it's going to change. Uh, Saudi Arabia is, is a, diff a different case because of the, uh, 
constraint the uh, conserv conservative uh, society and the role of the religious authority. But it is going to change because the king of Saudi Arabia now is taking very strong and courageous uh, strides in the, in the path of uh, modernization and uh, bringing uh, women to uh, resume, assume an uh, important role in the society. And uh, as you may know, now we have a, a vice uh, minister for education. Uh, she is a lady that is for the first time in our country. Uh, now there are uh, women working in different uh, departments in the, in the government. Uh, they used to be confined only to education, teaching uh, girls, and, uh, but now they, they, they are admitted to various uh, ministries, I mean uh, uh, departments. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, governmental uh, institutions. And the, 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 the most uh, promising and, and uh, comforting thing is that now uh, all the delegations of the Saudi uh, official delegations that go outside the country to, to, to attend conferences and uh, events is composed of men and women. And I was in Tunisia last uh, October. We held a, a big conference for youth and uh, the, the Saudi delegation came, and I was really very happy to see that there were three girls with them, young girls, you know, from the university. And they were dressed nicely. I mean, they, they didn't cover anything. I mean, they just, you know, the m modest uh, clothing. And uh, they, they participated, they talked, they uh, engaged in, 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 in conversation and giving their points of view. And, and uh, two days ago, I was uh, watching the Saudi TV, and there was a, a, an interview with the new Minister of Culture and uh, Information. And he was my friend because he was ambassador in Rabat for seven years. Uh, and he said that there are now new measures to allow the Saudi uh, young woman to uh, be even uh, editor-in-chief in the newspapers, which was, you know, all, only men. So there are many, many, many steps that are being taken. And I think the driving issue will come very soon, because it, it, there is nothing in the texts of Islam that prevents women from driving. At the time of the Prophet, they used to drive camels, and they, 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 they you know, it's an instrument of, of transportation, you know, it's a vehicle, whether it is a camel or a car or maybe a, a plane. And the funniest thing is that there are some Saudi pilots, and Al-Amir, Al uh, the Prince Walid bin Talal, uh, in his two private jets, he has uh, lady pri uh, pilots. So this is good, you know, things are moving. Oh, it, 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 it has, it has, it has. It, you know, look, I, I live in Morocco. I, I, I talked about Saudi Arabia and it is a different case, but it is opening now very, very, very quickly. Uh, I talk about Morocco where I have been living now for more than uh, 19 years. Uh, Morocco, uh, you know, there are many uh, uh, high uh, in, the, in the cabinet, the ministers. Uh, I know uh, three or four uh, ministers, you know, the Minister of Public Affairs, uh, Public Work and the Minister of Health and the uh, minister, state minister for foreign affairs. And uh, the, there are judges, women, you know, from different, you know, uh, and the, uh, yes, and, the, and the, 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 uh, the ladies of Morocco are in everywhere in the government, in the public sector. Uh, they, they, they also in the parliament, they are representatives in the parliament. So things uh, in Tunisia, the same thing is, 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 is also happening there. In Jordan, Syria, Egypt, of course, uh, Yemen, Yemen, uh, which is a, a very uh, you know weak uh, and underdeveloped uh, country, but there are ministers and uh, parliament members and judges from Yemen. In, 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 in the, so things are improving and, and, and moving you know ahead in, in gr uh, great and big strides. So we are not we are not worried about that. And that is as a result of the international No, Cisco is helping. Cisco is just one one factor. But you know, there is a big movement in the whole um, uh, OIC member states towards modernization, towards you know, freedoms, uh, towards uh, uh, allowing women to, to participate in, in, in the affairs of the society in all levels. And this is in, 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 in conformity with the teachings of Islam. Islam doesn't oppose this at all. And there is no restrictions in the text that say women cannot, uh, cannot be even ahead of a state. I don't care about what the ulama says, you know, because this is, this is human interpretation. I, I, I care about what the text itself says. 
the Quran itself praised the, 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 the queen of, of Yemen, Balqis, in, in the Quran when she met the, the King Solomon. So uh, this, is, this is a sign of the importance of, of uh, a successful queen, a successful lady, and it is a pattern of conduct. And I think uh, if we have a capable, and if this happened, you know, in, in uh, Pakistan there was a prime minister, in Bangladesh there was a prime minister, and, and we want, uh, uh, and uh, maybe in, in, in America we will have a lady uh, president very soon. <laughs> so these uh, efforts by Isisco also influence the politics, the, 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 the development of, the, of, the, of the, the member states, not only in education, science and culture, but also in other areas. Because it is, it is an, a, a, a developmental and civilizational institution that gives guidance, expertise, and also involve itself in the, in, the, in the movement of the societies in our part of the world. Uh, the uh, subsidiary organs of ISESCO, uh, as we have uh, heard uh, in the introduction, the Federation of the Universities of the Islamic World, uh, FWIW, FUIW, and uh, it has now more than 240 universities. And it, it is a, a, a body for co coordinating, coordination and uh, exchange of expertise between the universities. Uh, and also exchange of uh, visits, professors, students, also uh, the, the uh, how, uh, how do you say it, the, uh, uh, the conformity of, of, of the degrees between a university and another. Because certain universities do not accept uh, the, 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 the degrees that are offered by a, a university in, in, in one country or, the, or another. So the, the Federation is trying now to find parameters and uh, governing guides and principles that will allow all the universities to accept the graduates that, that, uh, that can you know, find a place to continue and pursue their higher studies or research or work or whatever. And th this is uh, something that will be uh, 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 studied and discussed uh, next October in the uh, meeting of the, uh, next May in the meeting of the uh, General Conference of the Federation in Baku. And I, uh, I, I, I said to the uh, Senior Vice uh, Provost, uh, Professor um, Mons today that we would be very happy to see somebody from Michigan University attending this conference because it is a, an opportunity for also this big university to, to see uh, how this federation is, is working and how the universities in the Islamic world are, are working. Uh, also we have in Cisco the Center for the Promotion of Scientific Research and the Islamic Body on Ethics of Science and Technology. And these are supporting uh, uh, institutions uh, to help uh, Cisco's main work uh, in its uh, field of competence. Now, also, we have special programs. Because we are uh, an organization working for the development of our member states, we are also an organization that's working for opening the windows and building bridges with other cultures and civilizations and nations. So we created the uh, program of ambassadors for dialogue among cultures and civilizations. And the first ambassadors who are now functioning uh, officially as ISESCO's ambassadors are the former, ambass uh, the former prime minister of Malaysia, Mahadhar Muhammad, and he's a well-known uh, intellectual. He's, a, by the way, uh, a, a pediatric, but he, he's a statement and uh, outspoken person. And the uh, former crown prince of Jordan, Prince Al Hassan bin Talal, and the first lady of Azerbaijan, because we cannot forget ladies, and she's a very bright uh, um, eye specialist. She's a doctor. And the uh, former Director General of uh, UNESCO, Mr. Mukhtar Mbu, from Senegal, and also the uh, former head of Mars Exploration Program in NASA, NASA, uh, uh, Sheikh Mudibu Diara, from Mali, and, and I will tell you a story about this gentleman. I was 10 years ago traveling from Rabat to Paris in Air France, and I sat and next to me was this very healthy and tall African gentleman. And uh, I thought he was a, a, a mentor of a Sufi uh, you know, order. I thought he, he was from the Tijani order or the Muridis. Or. So 
I, I, I sat politely next to him, and after we, 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 we were in the air, we started talking, and I said, uh, uh, I am so-and-so, and introduced myself to him. He said, welcome, I am Sheikh Moudi Boudiara. I am the, the chairman of uh, Mars Exploration Program in NASA. I said, what? <laughs> Mars Exploration Program? And I thought you were a, 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 a leader of a Sufi order. <laughs> he started laughing. <laughs> He said, no, no, I am really a scientist, and I, I live in Pasadena in California. And he gave me his card. I said, this is what I want. After three months, we are holding the first conference for the ministers of higher education and scientific research, and I want you to be the keynote speaker, please. So he accepted, and he came. And I also invited Ahmed Zuel. You know Ahmed Zuel, he is here. And he came, and also I invited... Uh, Farouk Al-Baz, uh, the geologist in, in, in also NASA, and he is now in Boston. So these uh, scholars from the Islamic world who are, uh, you know, American citizens also, and who helped, you know, in developing science and technology and, you know, space uh, uh, technology and space uh, uh, exploration uh, to a very high level. So, uh, Sheikh Moudi Boudiara also is our, our ambassador for Dialogue Among Cultures and Civilizations and many other uh, personalities. Also, we have the Supreme Council for Education, Science, and Culture outside the Islamic world. And this council is composed of uh, 12 personalities from heads of Islamic institutions in the West and Latin America and Southeast Asia. So we have from Italy, uh, the president, he's an Italian Muslim. And we have from uh, North America, uh, Dr. Al-Hattab, is in uh, uh, ISNA, and we have from France, from Spain, and from Singapore, and some other countries, I don't remember them now, and from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. And this council is to help SESCO in implementing its programs for Muslims in, in the non uh, member states. Uh, and, you know, in, in training teachers, development curricula, giving assistance, helping the institutions, and also working for the youth to help the youth, guide them, and put them in the track of uh, learning, of uh, indulging themselves in, 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 in constructive work in their societies, and integrating in their societies also to be uh, influential and productive elements in, in those societies. Also, we have ISESCO's prizes for science, technology, literature, education, research, and literacy. And we have the capitals of Islamic culture. Each year, we have three capitals. We started this program in 2005. We started with Mecca because it was the origin of Islam and the birthplace of the Prophet. And then we started every year, starting from 2006 up till now, we, we, we choose three capitals to be capitals of culture. And, the, and, the, the, and, and, and the, the purpose of this program is to put this capital in, in the spot of news, in, in, in the front uh, lines and also to give the people of the capital a chance to receive guests from different countries, whether from OIC member states or from different you know, countries who hold weeks of culture activities, art activities, festivals, music, and all sorts of things. And that, that is cultural exchange. And cultures meet, meet and, and, and the people, people of culture meet and exchange you know, their expertise and their ideas. And uh, uh, because of that, we promote good politics. We work on good politics, the politics that bring people together, create a friendship among them, uh, clarify misconceptions, correct the stereotype about nations and peoples and religions. Also, we are involved in the uh, re uh, religious dialogue, and I personally am a member of the Islamic Christian uh, Forum for, for, uh, for dialogue, and we held many meetings either in the Vatican or in some Muslim countries. And uh, it made a lot of progress in bringing, you know, ideas closer to one another. And we issued many bulletins, you know, joint bulletins with the uh, religious Christian authorities. And now we have widened this to include Jewish uh, clergy uh, people. And I have been appointed also in the board of trustees of the uh, World Congress of Religion for Peace, which is based in New York. And the... Uh, Secretary General is my friend, William Ventley. So, Cisco is not only in, 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 in developmental issues and 
politics in the, in the means uh, or in the sense of, 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 of bringing people together, but also in spreading good word that bring religion and the adherence to religions closer to one another because we are all the, 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 the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. We are all human beings. And I always repeat this, the th fourth caliph of Islam, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, in his letter to his uh, governor of Egypt at that time, Malik ibn al-Ashtar, told him to be just for all. He said, look on those who are under your governorship or uh, uh, authority. And they are two, two kinds, either a brother in religion or a brother in humanity. So be fair to them all. So this, this concept that has to be always, you know, disseminated and shared and accepted by all people, that we are also proud of our belongingness, of our heritage, of our background. But in the, in the final analysis, we are human beings. We are brothers and sisters in this sense, and we have to cherish this and keep it. Uh, we have also uh, Cisco's Centers for Training, Audiovisual and Multimedia Production to help, you know, the, the media people from our member states develop their uh, talents and capacities and be beneficial to their uh, respective countries. Our partnership is very wide. We have, as I said to you a few minutes ago, we have 175 you know, protocol and, uh, uh, and cooperation agreements with various institutions, and this shows it here. I won't just read it because you can see it, uh, all the UN, all the uh, non-government. We have a very wide you know, network uh, of cooperation. The, the special fo uh, areas of focus, I mentioned some of them. Uh, we shouldn't... Uh, we shouldn't, uh, you know, ponder a long time on this, but I would like to uh, emphasize uh, a very important uh, issue that uh, Cisco is proud of. You see, uh, we started in 1982. Now we are in our 28th year. We are still young. I mean, Cisco is like a young girl, very pretty, very rich. Everybody wants to get married to her. <laughs> and this brings a lot of envy and a lot of competition. <laughs> and, and we have to be very careful in, in, in behaving, in handling our affairs, in you know, presenting ourselves and also keeping our commitments uh, to, 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 to cherish and protect this, this uh, position that we have created for ourselves. And it is a, a difficult task. Uh, but uh, I am very proud to say that, you know, sometimes one cannot uh, praise him or herself, but I'm very proud that, to say that Cisco now is, uh, is sought after. It, many organizations come to Cisco to ask its partnership. And I'll give you three examples. Three years ago, in 2008, 2008, yes, at the beginning of that, we, we held a very big conference in Tunisia on terrorism. And I convinced the United Nations to join us. And uh, guess who came? Ban Ki-moon. I convinced the people of, uh, of the United Nations to join ISESCO because this is a very important issue for the whole world, you know. Terrorism cannot be fought by soldiers and uh, airplanes and tanks. It has to be also fought by changing the rotten ideas in the minds. We have to go deep into the roots of why those young people are committing these crimes, why they are deviating from the right path. We have to work on their minds and on their souls. So we convened this big conference and it was inaugurated under the patronage of the president of Tunisia who opened the first session and Mr. Ban Ki-moon came and it was a success. And this is a prestige for Cisco, you know, for the Director General to sit next to the uh, Secretary General of the UN and to be a uh, partner with, with the UN. The second uh, example is the World Bank. Some people say, what does Cisco have to do with the World Bank? But we convinced uh, Robert Zulik to uh, be a partner with Cisco last, last year. We held a big conference also in Tunisia on... Uh, the economy of information. Uh, how to, 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 to integrate and use the modern information system 
and, uh, and uh, 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 development in economics. And the, 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 World, Bank came, uh, the World Bank came and, and, and joined Cisco as a full partner. So Cisco now sits between the World Bank and the UN. And this is a high level for uh, an uh, intergovernmental organization working in a very you know, specific region. And the third example is with the International Francophonic Organization, which is the baby of France, to convince France and the French mentality that you are good enough to be, to be a partner with the Francophonic world. It's a difficult job, I know. But we, we managed to do that, and the Francophonic Organization joined ranks with the Cisco also, and we held another conference. And uh, the Secretary General, Mr. Abdul Diouf, who is the former president of Senegal, came and we sat next to each other and we made a very successful conference. These three examples to, I'm, I'm bringing here to show that ISESCO is a successful organization. Otherwise, these people won't come and join us and will never sit with us and sign uh, a declaration that after we finish our deliberations and our work, uh, we, we sign it and, 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 and publish it to the whole world. This is something that we have to keep and to uh, improve. And uh, this visit to the United States lies in this context. I came here to see that uh, Cisco is also working with the institutions in the United States for a better understanding between the OIC member states and the United States. And I'm very happy to say that I started very early, not today, for this encounter and for this experience. When uh, President Obama visited Turkey, I was in Turkey. I was invited by the uh, High Commissioner of the Alliance of Civilization, the former president of Portugal, Mr. George Sampaio, with whom we have also a memorandum of understanding and we, we hosted the third vocal point uh, meeting in our headquarters in Rabat. Uh, and 80 representatives of 80 uh, states from the world and 28 uh, international organizations came to Isesco's headquarters. So I was in Istanbul uh, attending the, the second uh, meeting of the Alliance of Civilization, Civilizations, and Mr. Obama was in, in Turkey. So the president of Turkey, Mr. Abdullah Gul, offered a reception for the heads of the delegations, and they were the Prime Minister of Spain, Mr. Sabatero, and the, the Secretary General of the Arab League and the OIC, and many, many foreign ministers and dignitaries from many countries all over the world. And we were standing there in the, in the, in the, in the lounge, drinking our you know, drinks and teas and things like that. And suddenly, Mr. Obama entered. And it was a, a very you know, surprising event for all these people to see the President of the United States coming to the hall without knowing that he will come. So I was among those who came and shook hands with him. And I stood with the, with the President. I said, I am so and so. I am the Director General of ISESCO. And ISESCO was very pleased to hear you speak in Istanbul and also uh, the ideas you said are uh, what we are for, for working for. And Cisco can be helpful in this respect. And uh, he was very kind to stand and, and, and exchange uh, uh, ideas and, 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 and talks with me. And then we took a, a photograph together and left. I think this was the, 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 the first triggering uh, incident that made me uh, think really uh, in, in, in terms of Yes, come to America. America is the biggest power in the world. America is the dream for many people in the world. America is the country that has all the capacities, all the abilities, all the potentials to lead the world and to be an example for the protection of justice, freedom, and uh, integration of, of, uh, of, of nations on the basis of mutual respect and sharing interests. And this is what Mr. Obama has said, and we are with him. We support him. We support the American people to be leaders. We support the American uh, leadership in the world for these principles. Because America has a, a moral duty. Before being the first country in the world in terms of power and ability and advancement in science and technology and walks of life, America is a dream for many people all over the world. You know, many people would like to, do, to immigrate to the United States and make you know, their lives here and make it, as they say, we make it in America. And many people succeeded. And I gave three examples. I gave Farouk al-Baz and Ahmad Zuwail and Sheikh Mudibu Diara. These are great scientists. They were here. 
and they had their education in the United States and became famous, and one of them got the Nobel Prize. So Isesco is keen on building these bridges, and I forget what happened in Detroit. This is uh, of, of, the, of the issue. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, it, it, it is, it is an, an incentive, it is an incentive for me to be more forceful and courageous to come to the United States because I love this country. I studied here uh, in, in 1975 till 1982 where I got my MA and PhD in the University of Oregon and two of my boys were born in America and they have American citizenship. And I'm proud of this, you know, part of my education, part of my existence because I learned a lot of things here. And I met many good people here. And I was telling Dr. Saeed this morning, when I came to the United States in 1975, the first step uh, that we made, we stopped in New York, and it was a cultural shock for me. You know, coming from Saudi Arabia, it's a developing country, but you know, not compared to the United States. And the first thing I see, Empire State Building and those, you know, skyscrapers. So it was a cultural shock anyway. But that was not the issue. Before that, a group of professors from the Midwest universities visited my university in Riyadh, King Saud University. And I invited with my brother four of the professors to our home. We offered them dinner and we just, you know, received them with, with warmth and you know, uh, friendship. And they were very happy and, and they said, when you come to the United States, don't forget to call us and come to see us. And one of them, I still remember his name, is Professor Samuel Braden. He was professor of economics at Indiana University. So when we arrived in New York, after we finished you know, our formalities with the Saudi cultural mission and all that stuff, we called Professor Bregdin. And he said, where are you? He said, we are in New York. He said, you have to come to Albany in uh, Indiana. Oh my God, Albany, where, where, where Albany? We are going, you know, I, my brother was going to Indiana, to Bloomington, I was going to Eugene, Oregon. So I said to my brother, let's go to Albany and see Professor Samuel Bregdin, you know, because we would like to see his, uh, his family and his wife and, and, the, and the city where he lives. So he asked us to take uh, the plane from LaGuardia Airport to uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And when I heard Louisville, I've never heard, you know, uh, I've, I've never been in Louisville, but I know Louisville. It's the home land of Muhammad Ali. <laughs> so we were fond of Muhammad Ali at that time. <laughs> so I said, well, I, okay, that's another, you know, reason to go to, to see Professor Samuel Braden to go to Louisville. <laughs> so we took the plane from LaGuardia Airport to Louisville and at the airport, you know, we found Professor Samuel Braden waiting for us and he helped us, you know, carry our suitcases and put it in his car and he took us to his home in Albany. It is across the river, you know, Louisville on this side and Albany is on the other side. And he insisted that we stay with him three days. I think he learned that Arabs, you know, host their guests for three days. <laughs> and he didn't let us, you know, we stayed with him three days. And that was the first time when I had the Big Mac. <laughs> So it was, you know, a, a very beautiful experience. But the, the, the story that I, I told Dr. Said when we went to uh, Bloomington, uh, also another professor who was in Indiana, he was the, 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 the dean of, of library uh, sciences, and uh, he invited us for dinner in his home. And he took us in his car around Bloomington to see the city. Myself, my wife, I was married at that time, and uh, my, 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 my brother. So we passed by a villa, a nice, a nice home, and there was a gentleman with a short, you know, and a shirt, you know, painting his home. So the professor said, hi, and he said his name, I, I forgot what it was. And they exchanged, you know, greetings, and then he drove away, and he, he said, this is the president of Indiana University. <laughs> and this was another cultural shock for me, because the president of my university was a very important person. <laughs> <laughs> so this was another beautiful thing I learned in, in America, humbleness, you know. People serve themselves, do the, their things by themselves. This is, this is a pride for the, for the individual. And the seven years I spent in Eugene, Oregon was the best of my educational life. I think it was really the, the secret behind my successes. So with this I will include because America is very important and we are here because we love America. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am, I think you wanted to ask another question. Yes. Um, okay, I was wondering if you have any advice for someone who's interested in doing research on various things about Islam, specifically uh, Islamic finance. 
Here, but for someone going over there, what would you, what advice could you give them in terms of how to know how to relate to the people? You know, what if you're studying consumers, how to understand what you know the average Arab person or Muslim person feels? Sorry, I know those are not the same things. No, it's okay <laughs> because you know there are many uh, Europeans studying in, in the in the universities in the Islamic countries. Mm -hmm. You know, we have uh, some in uh, uh, Egypt, in Jordan. In uh, Morocco, in Al Ahwain University, we have American students and European students. Also in Malaysia, the Islamic International University in Kuala Lumpur, there are some European and American students. So it, it is it is easy for an, a researcher or a, a person who wants to, to to pursue certain you know uh, studies in, 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 in the Islamic countries. They are, they are they they have the, you know the ability and the the uh, the venues to, to achieve that. Is that what you asked about? Sort of. <laughs> But if you want to do... A for example, I'm interested in understanding consumer demand for takaful Islamic insurance, let's say. How do I know... I mean, who buys these products? If I want to find out things like that, what, how important are Muslim beliefs to the average Muslim versus... You know, you hear there are different, obviously different levels of... Uh, the, 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 there there are institutions uh, who are, which are... Uh, specialized in, in this kind of, of, uh, of work, of, of, of speciality. The IDB, the Islamic Development Bank in Jeddah, the Islamic uh, uh, Chambers of, of, uh, of Commerce, and uh, the uh, Islamic uh, Center for Trade in Casablanca in Morocco, the uh, Islamic Center for uh, Statistics and uh, Economics in uh, Ankara in uh, Turkey, you can, uh, if you want me, I will uh, provide you with the, with the uh, addresses and uh, telephone numbers of these uh, institutions. Maybe you can contact them. They will be of a great help to you. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. That's my pleasure. The gentleman in the... Uh, yes, okay. So... You, yes, you... you. Thank you very much for a very enlightening talk. And uh, uh, it, it is quite uh, enlightening to see this explosion of, of organizations. Uh, and I think you are perhaps too modest. Uh, this is your work. As the director general of ESCO, ESESCO, you have actually built this huge network. And I think it's much to your credit uh, to, to, to do this. And I congratulate you for Thank it. Thank you, sir. And I also apologize for my colleagues at the, <laughs> at the customs who, well, that has to, but, but I have another problem. Uh, what, what are we to think of, uh, for example, the, the extensive Saudi financing of madrasas throughout Asia and, and the television programs that promote Wahhabism, which is not, I think you would say, the most tolerant form of Islam. Um, on NPR Friday night, we heard a, a an Egyptian journalist uh, sort of bemoaned the fact that uh, there comes a strong message not of tolerance and peace but of exclusion uh, on, the, on, on the Saudi supported uh, stations. What are we to think of that? Okay. Uh, in the past this could be uh, the case. There was some kind of uh, closed-minded uh, conservative uh, approach uh, by the uh, religious authorities. And the government was not 100% uh, supportive of that, but you know, these were done uh, through uh, charitable uh, channels and uh, not through governmental uh, uh, direct uh, aid. Now the situation is completely the opposite. Uh, King Abdullah is uh, uh, launching a, a reformation process uh, in the religious uh, field, in the uh, social field, in the educational and scientific field. And uh, the uh, evidence to that is the recreation and the reformation re uh, of the ha super, super Supreme Council of Ulama in, in Saudi Arabia, which used to be only members from the hard liners. But now they have included other, s other Muslim schools of thought, the Hanafi, the Maliki, and the other, you know, uh, uh, other, other experi experiences within the, 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 the Islamic uh, uh, 
field of, of, of jurisprudence and ijtihad. And the king himself launched his initiative for dialogue and, and con convened a big conference in Mecca for the Muslim scholars from all the Islamic countries. And then he held another meeting in Madrid with, uh, with, the, with the king of, of, of Spain, Juan Carlos. And to that conference, he invited all the uh, religious uh, authorities in the world, the Catholics, the Protestants, the Jews, the Muslims, the Buddhists, and many, you know, uh, heads of religious institutions. Uh, and, and this was a, a, a breakthrough by the king. It, it never happened in the past. And then he moved further to New York in the United Nations uh, General Assembly, and Shimon Peres attended. So this is, you know, something that took place under the uh, supervision and leadership of King uh, Abdullah. And I don't think the government is supporting madrasas. The government now is not supporting any uh, religious institution in anywhere, but the governmental organizations like ISESCO, like the IDB, like the OIC, like the Arab League, and uh, doesn't give any assistance to, to uh, private uh, institutions or religiously uh, oriented madrasas, which are hardliners, you know, uh, conservatives, or as you have said, Wahhabis. And Wahhabism was, uh, distorted by the, by the ulama of, uh, of this school itself. In the beginning, it wasn't like that, but you know, if you read the text uh, of, uh, of the founder of this uh, uh, reformation uh, process, Mr. Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab, or Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab, it is different from what uh, his uh, students are, are doing or were doing in the, in, the, in the few past years. So I assure you that the, uh, uh, the Saudi government now is not, is not doing anything that uh, encourages such. Uh, uh, close-minded and uh, fundamentalist uh, in the in the in the sense which which represents now uh, movements whether in 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 Asia or in Africa and I am w a witness to that because we move in the member states and we meet the people there and I think this uh, trend is has been and is decreasing very very strongly. I have a, a very related question, the previous question. Um, I'm interested in the role of Al-Azhar uh, Al University in Egypt, because uh, uh, especially in the politics, role in politics, because in 17th or 60s, this university take a major role in the, to fight against the Israel. And so how about the uh, contemporary role of this university? in the Islamic world? Al-Azhar has been going through difficult times because you know, it is under the uh, supervision of the government. Uh, in the old uh, time, uh, Al-Azhar was a, an independent institution and the Shaykh Al-Azhar was elected by the Council of Ulama. Now Shaykh Al-Azhar is appointed by the President of the Republic and he has to be uh, in line with the uh, government's policies and government you know, choices. But with, with this reality, it, it, does, it doesn't you know, I mean, affect the role of Al-Azhar. Al-Azhar is a very uh, uh, um, original and strong institution, a moderate institution. The ulamas of Al-Azhar are open-minded, the majority of them. And the texts taught in Al-Azhar are you know, diversified. You know, they, 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 they learn about all the sects, all the schools of thought, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, Hanbali, even Imam Ja'fari, uh, Shi'i uh, school of thought. And uh, uh, what Al-Azhar needs now, uh, and I'm very happy that a uh, few, few hours ago we were talking about the, 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 the initiative by Al-Azhar to send uh, you know, some of their graduates of some of their preachers and, and ulamas to be trained here and also they will be trained also in, 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 in Al-Azhar itself. So they, they, w they will be uh, equipped with, with knowledge, with languages, with, with, with insight about the world, when they go outside, there will be, a f will be forces of moderation, of, of uh, bringing people together, you know, making uh, peace and uh, uh, fraternity am among the nations and the peoples of the world. And I have uh, to say something. I was in Argentina and in Chile and in uh, Lima. In Lima, four years ago, I was uh, attending a, a big... Uh, 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 you, uh, I mean, meeting with, with, with the heads of the religious authorities in, 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 in Peru. There was the cardinal of the Catholic Church 
and the rabbi of the Jewish synagogue and the imam of uh, the Muslim mosque. And there were many people attending and I was the guest of honor and they were very kind to give me you know, a, a decoration. And so I gave a speech on the uh, uh, role of the religious authority in creating understanding and fraternity among the followers of the different religions. Because they, they have a great responsibility because if we have good uh, clergy people, whether Muslims, Christian, Jews, or Buddhists, whatever, if we have good people you know, disseminating and preaching goodness and, and peace and love and fraternity, you know, they will uh, participate in lessening the, the, the impact of, 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 of tension and, and animosity and misconception about, uh, among peoples and, uh, and nations in the world. So I was talking about this, this issue very strongly. And after I finished, an old lady, she was, uh, uh, she was, she was uh, a nun, very old. She was listening there. And then she came and she hugged me. She said, I've, 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 uh, this is the first time I hear such beautiful, you know, uh, spiritual uh, advices to us. And I, th I thank you very much. And she said, will you allow me to give you uh, Mother Teresa medal? It was a gold medal uh, as a gift to you because of, of, of the spirit you are given here. And I think, you know, this is the responsibility of us, educators, uh, religious uh, authority, uh, people of culture, media people. And they, the media has a great role to play because the media can make people, you know, either uh, peaceful or they can make them, you know, forceful or the, otherwise. Because if you, if you disseminate wrong information or if you cover the news in a certain way that, uh, uh, you know, make people furious and, 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 and ready to, to, to react violently, you are, you are, you are participating or uh, adding uh, oil to the fire. But if you, if you cover the media, uh, the events, in a rational way, giving all the truth, all the facts about the, the event, then you are letting people judge themselves. You don't force them to believe in something. And I think this is our responsibility all in all our, our, our fields of, of competence, whether we are educators, professors in universities, or researchers, or media people, or culture people, or even religious authorities. Okay. We are just about out of time. Yes, I think. Uh, I am sorry. Uh, I, I will finish by thanking you all for coming. You have given me a really a, a source of, of enthusiasm and, and, and happiness uh, to, to talk to you. And I hope I have said something meaningful to you. And thanks a lot. It's we who thank you. Thank you.